Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and in this video I will be covering how you can set up your Ubuntu based distribution so that you can play games developed for both Linux and Windows. Now it's been roughly a year since I produced a gaming setup card for Ubuntu and though my existing video is still relevant if you're running Ubuntu 2004 there have been a few changes to Ubuntu since the release of the LTS. So for this particular video I'm going to be using the installation of Ubuntu 2104 However, all the steps shown in this video can be replicated on any of the official Ubuntu flavors or indeed any distributions based on Ubuntu 2104. At this point, I'm gonna take the assumption you have updated your system and have also installed the correct GPU drivers for your hardware. Now, if you're unsure how to do that, there is a great guide found on the Lutris Wiki and that'll cover the installation of both AMD and Nvidia drivers. So obviously choose the option that's relevant to your particular system. So the first step in the process is to install Steam and Proton GE. Now on Linux it's possible to install and run Steam which will allow you to both play games that are developed natively for Linux as well as games that were originally developed for Windows and this is made possible for a compatibility tool called Proton. So to keep everything simple Proton is a tool that emulates the Windows environment so that when games are launched they believe they're actually run on Windows natively. Now this is achieved by using a combination of Wine, which is the compatibility layer, as well as technologies such as DXVK and VKD3D Proton, both of which translate the Microsoft proprietary DirectX graphic API to a cross-platform one called Vulkan, which as it turns out is natively supported on Linux. Now historically you would have to do all of this manually, but with the advent of Proton and Steam integration, this process is now largely install, download and play your games. So from an end user perspective, this means that often your Windows developed games will now run on Linux with little to no performance loss. Of course, it's not ideal as not every game will work, but the main ones that do have trouble still running to this day are games that predominantly use kernel level anti-cheat such as EAC or Battleag, or some games that use certain types of DRM. In fact, if you ever wanted to check the compatibility of your library on Linux, then I strongly recommend you visit ProtonDB, as this is a website specifically set up for Linux users in order to recall their experience of running games using Proton. Now, just a word of warning, however, take the particular rating system with a grain of salt, and instead read the reports, as often you'll find out if some tinker is required to get a game to launch. I'd say as a general rule, if most people do claim the game works, then it will be in a working state on Linux. Now you can install Steam using your distribution's package manager with a GUI software store, or alternatively with the following terminal command, which is sudo apt install steam. Once Steam is installed, launch your application and sign into your account. Now one thing you'd like to notice is when you first sign into Steam, your game library will be greyed out in fact, the only games that Valve has whitelisted as working with Proton or have native Linux versions will be available to be installed. However, you can easily change this and override the behavior so that you can install any games in your library and run them using Proton. Let's navigate to Steam, Settings, Steam Play, and under the Advanced setting, make sure that you tick the option that says Enable Steam Play for all other titles. You'll also notice that in the drop-down menu, you will have a choice of different options. You'll have Proton Experimental, the latest version of Proton, and then any other custom version of Proton you may have installed. Now, ultimately, it doesn't really matter which option you choose, as you can manually overwrite on a game-by-game -game basis which version of Proton you want to be using. So in this particular option, we're going to choose Proton 6.3-4. Restart Steam, and that'll all be set up for you. At this point, it's just the same process as in Windows. You select a game, and you click the Install button, and then just follow the instructions from there. Now, if you checked out ProtonDB previously, you may have noticed that in some of the reports, ProtonGE is mentioned a few times, especially when it comes to games that have cutscenes. Simply put, ProtonGE is a custom build of Proton that includes many fixes that are not found in the official releases of Proton. And these fixes could include video playback, fixes for external launches, and various other patches. As a rule, if a game does not work with the official or experimental versions of Proton, it is a safe bet that running the game with ProtonG will do the trick. 
Now, since Proton G is a custom version of Proton, you will need to install it manually, but this is not a difficult task. First, navigate to the releases page, and then download the appropriate version. Now, make sure to actually read what the release notes say, as sometimes newer versions of Proton G will have regressions, and that can break compatibility with other games. Once downloaded, extract the archive, take a copy of the Proton G folder, and enable hidden files. Go back to your home directory, go to .steam, root, and in this folder, you want to create a new folder called compatibilitytools.dig. And in here, you want to paste the Proton G build folder. Next, restart Steam if it's already open. Now, if you right click on the properties of a game and go to compatibility, you can choose the option here to force the use of a specific Steam Play compatibility tool and then choose Proton G from the list that appears. So when it comes to choosing between Proton and Proton G, I tend to recommend trying out Proton out first, and unless the game requires a fix provided explicitly by Proton G, or some media foundation support for cutscenes. Now, I did also mention briefly, there is another version of Proton called Proton Experimental, as this tends to be a test bed for the next version of Proton, and it's usually required for games that have just been released, but in my experience, I found that using Proton G instead uses suffices. One other thing just to note is by default, for any game that would be using Vulkan on Linux, Steam will now process a shader cache before launching the game, and it uses this using a library compiler called Fossilize. I recommend you keep this on, as this will greatly reduce the amount of stuttering that can occur in-game due to a shader cache compilation in the background. Of course, the downside to using that is that it, you may be initially doing this process for the first time you launch a game, although you may need to repeat this process if you update your graphics drivers. However, if you want to disable this for some reason, you can easily find it under Steam, Shader Pre-Caching, and just untick the option that says Enable sh Shader Pre-Caching. So far we've covered how to play games using Steam, but what do you do if you've got games outside of the Steam ecosystem? Well, this is where Lutris comes in. Simply put, Lutris is a games platform and it allows you to launch games from a variety of publishers including EA, Blizzard, Bethesda, Ubisoft and many more. In fact, it also has support for several emulators for older games consoles. Now, the way Lutris works is that you download and execute a Lutris script for a particular game and that script will handle the installation process in a mostly automatic fashion although you may sometimes have to manually install some dependencies beforehand. Now from Ubuntu 2104 onwards, Lutris can now be installed directly from your distributions repository using a package manager. So for example, you could use your GUI software store or alternatively you can install it with the terminal. The command to do that is sudo apt install Lutris. Now the inter interface for Lutris is pretty straightforward. You need to choose Lutris under sources and then search for the game that you want to install. From here, select the game, click install, and then at this stage, it's just a matter of you following the instructions that appear. Now, one thing I will note is that in most cases, what Lutris will do is actually install the games launcher itself, and then within the games launcher, at that point, you download and install the game in the same manner that you'd be installing it on Windows, basically. Now Lutris uses a modified version of Wine, much like Proton to run games, and that although you can technically use Proton with Lutris, this is not recommended, as it does have a tendency to break Wine prefixes and game saves in particular. In other words, keep it simple, use Proton with Steam and Lutris for everything else. So when it comes to using CPUs on Linux, they tend to operate on a governor basis, and often the default governor is designed to balance performance with potential power saving. However, if you're gonna be playing video games, you want to be using the performance governor. Now you can manually do this, but I found that it's better to use Feral Game Mode to enable this functionality on the fly. Feral Game Mode has been pre-installed since Ubuntu 2004, but you can install it on other Ubuntu-based distributions using the following terminal command. sudo apt install game mode. 
and once this is installed, you just need to request it. In Steam, add in game mode run, followed by a percentage sign, the word command and a percentage sign. We'll make sure that when this game is launched, it will launch with game mode enabled. In Lutris, assuming that game mode is installed, it should be enabled by default. If not, you can always go to preferences, system options, and just make sure that the toggle here for enable feral game mode is enabled. So with these three applications installed on your system, it should, should now be possible for you to play most games available on the PC platform and with decent performance. Of course, there are other tweaks you can try, such as using custom Linux kernels or even different CPU schedulers, or if you want specialized software such as Mango HUD, but these are beyond the scope of this video. Either way, with that, it does bring this video to an end. As always, thank you very much for watching, and if you did find this video helpful, then please do consider leaving a like, check out the rest of the content on my channel, and subscribe if you like what you see. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye now.